My aunt's house in Arkansas in the 1970s was about a quarter mile from a very busy railroad track, with trains coming through regularly every night. If we visited in summer, we would often stay outside and play hide-and-seek in the warm, humid twilight, catch lightning bugs, and sneak up the road to stand defiantly on the railroad tracks. At bedtime, if the wind was whipping around the corner, it was the perfect backdrop for telling the younger kids scary stories with the lights off. They'd be huddled together on pallets made of hand-stitched quilts and fluffy feather pillows, straining their ears for every whispered scary word I carefully chose and timed. Occasionally, the shrieking after the final boo was enough to get Uncle Jake's attention, and he'd open the bedroom door, flip on the light, and sternly tell everyone to go to sleep, or else. At dusk one night is when I learned the story about the boy who'd never come out of the woods. Some say he was abducted by aliens because there was a strange streaking lightning without sound that night. Some say he ran away because his stepfather was beating him. He was supposed to meet his buddies later that day, but when he didn't show up, they just thought he'd got in trouble at home again. My cousin Ricky told me he saw Lenny's stepdad in the woods near the last sighting, and he was carrying a shovel. But my brother says Ricky was just trying to get attention. Being a natural storyteller, I've often wondered what really happened the night Lenny disappeared. I took the chance to write the story and self-publish it. When I did, the comments I received made me feel just as proud as I did when my little cousins used to shriek after the final boo. Writing the story after all these years brought back not only special memories of happier, carefree times, but the realization that not everyone was so fortunate in their home life. Your friends miss you, Lenny.